everyone, it turns out the director of Breath of the Wild might have just told us where Breath of the Wild takes place in the official Zelda timeline. Does it match up with the theory we previously had? Let's flip the script and find out. Hey everyone, so the director of Breath of the Wild, Hidemaro Fubayashi, he had an interview with Gamer Rant, and they asked him specifically where Breath of the Wild takes place in the timeline. Here's what he had to say. It takes place in an age long, long after any of the titles released to date. It is the most recent age, and because of this, we believe players will be able to easily immerse themselves in the game. Of course, regardless of the time period, the story does unfold in Hyrule. So for those who have played other titles in the series, there will be a lot of recognizable places to enjoy. Whoa. So let's take this all in scope. This quote does not tell us exactly where Breath of the Wild is in the timeline. Or does it? If you remember back in the day, we put up a video up here where we talked about the concept of a dragon break. Where essentially... All three timelines converge to the same point. But there's a lot of key points in what he says here that make me believe firmly that this is the case. Now, if you look strictly at the game and forget what he said, there are references to all three timelines. There are also things that contradict placements in all three timelines. That's what makes this really weird. Uh, YouTuber HMK firmly believes that it falls in the child timeline. And he cites all these things that explain away why it can't be in the adult timeline and why it can't be in the downfall timeline. But then there's still evidence it could be in the downfall timeline. It's still evidence it could be in the adult timeline. Reality is that we don't actually know. And it's almost weird that Nintendo is not 100% confirming where it goes. Now, there is a couple reasons that Nintendo might be going this route. One, they just don't care about the timeline. This is something I've always subscribed to, and for the most part, I felt that was right up until they released Hyrule Historia, which obviously released the official timeline, and that really muddied the water for my opinion that they don't care about the timeline, because why would they release something that has the official timeline if they just don't give a hoot about it, even if I feel like they pulled that downfall timeline out of their buttocks. Now, getting back into the other point, it could just be that Nintendo doesn't know where this time, where this game really goes in the timeline. Maybe they just want it to be so far in front of everything that it's just about what comes next. Everything they make in the future is after Breath of the Wild. They won't be revisiting the old timelines anymore. In a way, you could argue this would be like a series reboot without actually rebooting the series. Where it's respectful to the series past and still recognizes that that past existed before this game but it doesn't throw it away to start the series anew again. And this is something you could subscribe to since E.G. Aonuma, the series producer, has come out and stated that all future Zelda games are going to be open world. It would make a lot of sense to base all those future games off of Breath of the Wild. But, Fubuyashi is the director of the game. He's more involved with the game than even E.G. Aonuma himself. So when I look at these words, there's a lot of things I feel like support the fact that this is a dragon break, that this is a convergence of all three timelines. For starters, he said it's the most recent age. The most recent age of what? Well, as he says later, you know, it takes place in Hyrule. It's the most recent age of Hyrule. Well, we know in the adult timeline that new Hyrule was founded. We know in the child timeline that it's the same Hyrule that we got in Ocarina of Time in Skyward Sword. We know in the downfall timeline it's also the same Hyrule. So, yeah, the most recent age of what? <laughs> uh, to me, it's just the most recent Zelda game, which, again, converges all the timelines together. Uh, he also goes on to say that regardless of time period, the story does unfold in Hyrule, so those who have played other titles in the series... There will be a lot of recognizable places to enjoy. And the thing is, there's a lot of recognizable things in this game from all three timelines. That's the crazy thing. If it's referencing all three timelines in the game, and there are specific things that happened in each timeline that did not happen in the other timeline, but are referenced in one game, 
That, to me, isn't just an Easter egg at this point. The reason this game takes place 10,000 years after Ocarina of Time, which means it takes place thousands upon thousands of years after any other event in the past, is because how those timelines ended doesn't necessarily matter. You know, oh, Ganondorf was sealed away with a stab through the head and was destroyed with a stab through the heart. None of that matters because we are so far in the future that anything that could have possibly happened in between, there are so many things that could have changed. As an example, in the adult timeline, the biggest argument is that they founded New Hyrule, and if this takes place in Old Hyrule, there's no way in heck it could be from that timeline. But if all three timelines converge, it doesn't have to be that exact ending. They could end up coming back to Hyrule over the course of thousands upon thousands of years. Again, this is about a dragon break. It doesn't matter where all three of the timeline prongs ended, because they all three, thousands of years down the line, ultimately lead to Breath of the Wild. That's why I fully believe what Fubayashi presents here is this ideology that one, it's kind of a reboot of the series, and two, that it does it in a way where it brings all the timelines together by referencing all three timelines all throughout the game. And there is so much evidence to support this, I almost don't even feel like I need to state any of it. But I'll try to talk a little bit. You had you know, Princess Zelda talking about the Twilight stuff. Okay, that's obviously a reference to Twilight Princess, which is from the Child Timeline. You have references, in terms of Koroks and Rito, to the Adult Timeline. So now you have the Child Timeline references there. You have references to the Adult Timeline. And Ganon. Let's just throw him out there. Calamity Ganon. In what timeline is Ganon only just called Ganon? Not Ganondorf and then Ganon. Just Ganon. Why? That would be the downfall timeline. So now there's a direct reference to there. And if you actually go through the history of the game, all the lore it presents to you, whether it's from the Zora area or any other area of the game that it talks about the past of the game, there's a lot of contradicting things that make it not exactly fit perfectly in any of the three timeline branches. But there's a plenty of evidence to make an argument it fits in one of those timeline branches, but there's just as much evidence against why it doesn't fit in that timeline branch. There is not a single explanation out there for just one timeline that completely eliminates all the issues that counter it and make it fit into a different timeline. Hence, with Fubayashi saying, this is the most recent age of Hyrule, to me, that means all three timelines have converged, it's officially a dragon break, and the mystery has been solved. Do you agree? Do you have your own timeline theory? Let us know down in below in the comments. As always, like, subscribe, comment, you know, do what you gotta do. If you really didn't like this video, you know, thumbs down that bad boy. It's okay, I won't be offended. I hope you enjoyed this brief look inside the potential timeline placement. I won't say confirmed, but it feels like it's confirmed to me. Uh, where Breath of the Wild is almost an affirmation of the Dragon Break idea. But again, you'll find many other interpretations of these quotes out there. Uh, as I said, I'll throw a link down in the description to our buddy, our good friend, HMK, who has his own thoughts on this little tidbit of news that actually helps support his child timeline placement. As always, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jets from Nintendo Prime. I'll see you next time. I just wanted to take this opportunity to let folks know that if you want to support us further at Nintendo Prime, you can do so on Patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For just $1, you gain access to all of our Patreon-exclusive posts that are not exclusive to other tiers. For $5 a month, you gain early access to our Nintendo Prime podcast and an eventual general gaming podcast that we hope to release once we hit one of our stretch goals. For $10 a month, we will actually take your comments and suggestions on Patreon and use them to shape our content moving forward. There is just too many comments and ideas flowing here on YouTube. We really need a way to condense that down to the people who truly care about what we're doing every single day. For $20 or more, you will become a producer on one of our podcasts, and you will be mentioned by name at the end of at least one podcast per month, plus you'll always get all previous rewards. For $100 or more, well, I don't expect anyone to actually support us for this amount, you will get a say in naming future shows and podcasts that we release. That being said, thank you for tuning in, and as always, stay classy.